Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I want to show you a little bit about how to use reverb in Reason. Now we're going to look at a song that's still in the mixing process, but I, I want to show you about where you bring reverb into the process. I've done a little bit of leveling, um, a light EQing, some light compression, and now I want to go and add reverb to start getting the sense of the room. So what you're going to learn in this video is how to use send effects, or why you should use send effects for reverb, and when, how to get the reverb sounding better from the first second you apply it, and finally, how to sort of use the RV7000, which is the main reverb you should be using in Reason. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only re stock reverb in Reason worth using. There are plenty of third-party reverbs which are worth buying. Uh, I really like the Valhalla verbs. They're super affordable, and they're great. Um, but we're just looking at stock reverbs today. So we're going to jump right in, but I want to invite you to like and subscribe to this channel in case you're interested in learning more about Reason. And also, if you've got any questions, leave them below. If you use reverb differently, let me know too. So let's take a quick listen to this song. There's no reverb on it right now. So that's basically what it sounds like. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is how do you get reverb even on your tracks? Nine times out of 10, I think the best way to do it is through using a send effect. Basically what a send effect does is it sends a signal to another channel and that then is where the effect is applied. If you want to see how to set up effects, sends, and how to do it the right way in Reason, I've got a whole video on it and a free template you can download. The link will be up here and down there. It's probably one of my most important videos. Go check that out. Now we're going to jump in, assuming that you know how to set up a send effect. And what I want to talk about is when you should use a send effect with reverb versus when you shouldn't. So I think nine times out of 10 with reverb, you're going to want to use it as a send effect. When you use it as a send effect, reverb is basically acting more in a natural way kind of just help the song blend in, mush together, to have a more natural, organic sense to it. That's what you're going to be doing most of the time. And in that case, using a send effect is great because you often want multiple instruments affected by the same reverb. For example, if a band is playing in a room, they're all going to be playing in that same room, so they should all have the same reverb. When you don't want to use reverb as a send effect, or when you might want to consider using it as an insert effect, is when you're doing more like a creative sound effect design. Like if you want a voice to sound like it's in a canyon or something like that. And then you might want to just insert the reverb directly onto the channel. So that's what the difference between when you want to use a re uh, reverb as an insert or a send. So now the first thing I want to do is go to this drum loop. I've got a drum bus right here and I want to send the drums to a room to make it sound a little more natural. So I've in put the effect send on we're going to turn the level all the way up for now, just so we can hear it. And we'll solo the drums. And effect one, I've already set up, or effect send one, I've already set up to be a small room. So we'll also solo this. And I've just got the first room preset from RV7000. It's a pretty good preset to begin with. So let's take a listen. I'm going to jam up. Actually, we'll mute the reverb. Listen to it clean. This is just the drum loop as it is. Now let's bring the reverb in. doesn't sound good, does it? No, that's because there's a reverb and an echo um, on that reverb. But now what I want to do, once we lower the level, it'll all sound fine. But what we're going to want to do is dial in, basically, there's, you can do most of, first of all, you want to make sure if you're using it as a send effect that it's all the way wet, and then you use the level control here to bring it in. The next thing you're going to want to do is open the EQ button and turn on the low pass and the high pass filter so that a lot of the muddy stuff doesn't make it in and you don't crowd your mix. You're also going to want to turn on the EQ on E mode and sort of just scoop out the middle here where a lot of the main instruments are so that the reverb doesn't cloud up everything. All right, now that we've done that, let's bring the reverb down and we'll slowly bring it in until it sounds louder than we want it, but at a more usable space. So that's the 
do the K and a sh oops, if we do a short K. And so basically what I'm looking to do here in this song, first of all, is to get the length right so that each snare hit is almost filling itself up. It would be great if it wasn't a loop and I could do it individually on tracks, but that's not where we're going. So what I want to listen for is basically each snare to hit at going into the next. And I think we even need more of a uh, low pass on the kick just because it's a loop. And that's about right. And so what I also want to do now is I'm going to put another EQ on the back end just to cut out the low end. We really don't want any of this kick coming through. So we'll do a low cut, but really what we want to do is a low shelf at about 130 and just knock that off. And now the room itself is kind of how echoey it is. So we want to bring that down. This is a little too big. And we also want less diffusion. That'll make it a little tighter. All right, now we want to do the pre-delay. And this is basically how long it takes for the first delay hit to sound. A bigger, a longer pre-delay will make it sound bigger. All right, yep. All right. And the mod amount is going to make the room sound more alive. You've also got a few room shapes here an EQ, which can be helpful, but I just think it's easier to use the EQs after. Let's just, again, copy the shape we had up front, um, and let's dampen some more high frequencies. We're not going to use the gate here. All right, now let's bring it down again. And that's about right. Now let's turn it off. Just hear how much bigger and more alive that snare now sounds. So the best way when you're, do, when you're doing EQ, I think, it can be really hard to hear, is you over boost it, get it sounding gross, but you have an idea what you're trying to achieve with it, and then bring it all the way back, bring it in, and then wherever you end up with, now you're going to want to back it off even another half dB because uh, reverb can always just really ruin a mix. So now let's listen to it together. Now what I'm going to do is, like I said, because I want this to be sort of realistic, like you're actually in a room, I'm also going to send a little bit of the guitar into the same channel. So let's listen. This will be fully in. That's too much. And that just gives it a little more organic sound. Now the last thing I want to do is also... We'll add a little bit on the percussion bus here. And this is where the buses come in. And then we'll add an insert effect on one of the guitars in a sec. Like this, it's just too much. But again, it sort of glues it together. Let's turn the reverb off. More alive. All right. So the next thing I want to do is take this lead guitar here. We're actually going to do an insert effect on it, a reverb insert effect. And so we're going to use the RV7000 again, and we're just going to go with the um, plate. All oh, first. Plate. And so a plate is sort of a sharper, more artificial sound. And because it's an insert, we just want to do a little bit. We have to use the wet-dry knob. Oops, that's not the channel. Yes, it is the right channel. Okay. So let's 
uh, actually go loop the part where the guitar is playing. Okay. So here's the lead guitar phrase, and we'll just loop this and solo it so we can hear it coming. I'll turn up the volume. So, this is what it sounds like all wet. Half. And let's make the pre delay a little bigger. Again, it makes it. That's probably too long. And let's see about a little more decay. That sounds good. You start to hear sort of spacing out there. That's what we want. We don't want any of this low end, though. Using the EQ, we're going to take it down. Here, I actually do kind of want the high end. So that's fine. A little high EQ. And now let's bring it down to a dryer. Let's listen to it off. Versus. You hear how it just takes up a little more space, a little more body. It lives a little. So there you have it. Those are the two main ways to use reverb in Reason, either as a send effect or as an insert. Don't overdo it. You want to be tasteful, however much you think is right subtract about 15% from that, and that's probably a good starting point. You can easily ruin your mixes by over-adding reverb. So I hope you enjoyed this. Leave any questions below. If you're interested in an advanced guide on reverb, be sure to leave some comments, and maybe I'll make one of those as well. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.